Russ Thaler at the HQ taking stock of what's going on in the NBA with CBS Sports. Uh, Bill Ryder and John Gonzalez, also the two guys from the Beyond the Arc podcast. Gentlemen, let's start in the Eastern Conference when there is a clear and present number one team. In fact, the Boston Celtics have already clinched not only the East, but the best record in all the NBA and home court advantage in the playoffs. The bigger question comes after that between the Bucks, Cavs, Magic, and Knicks, all within two games of each other, all vying for that number two spot in the East to stay away from the seas as long as possible. So, Bill Ryder, I pose this question to you amongst those four teams. Who finishes number two in the East? Pass. Am I allowed to? <laughs> no, I got, I got to pick so. All right, so I hate myself, Russ, and I didn't like you so much. I'd hate you, too, for making me say this. I'll go the Milwaukee Bucks, even though I'm obviously not high on Doc Rivers. They have lost to three straight lottery teams. In fact, they're the first team in 30 years to outright lose three straight games when they were double-digit favorites. Forget the fact there was no Giannis in this game tonight. It, it, it's just a brutal reality, but everybody beneath them, except maybe the Knicks for me, I don't really buy, and maybe I should give more respect to the Magic. I know Milwaukee's got a really tough schedule the rest of the way. So I think the schedule's really, really brutal. But I just think with the cushion they have and the few remaining games, I think they're going to find a way to squeak out that number two. But there's no good options, which is probably the main reason I'm answering status quo, at least at number two. John, your guy built not very confident in his selection of the Milwaukee Bucks finishing <laughs> two in the East. Uh, what says you? I say that Bill's right. We are answering all these questions about the East under protest. This is ridiculous. I, I guess I'm picking the, the Bucks too. I didn't want to. Think, going into today's game, I thought, all right, well, they've got Dame back, no Giannis, but it's the Raptors, and the Raptors have been terrible. They had lost 15 games in a row, and so the Bucks went, hold on a second. We're also pretty bad right now. They lose to the Raptors. Now they've lost five of six. Their last three games, they lost to the Wiz, the Grizz, and now the Raptors. They're 15 and 16 under Doc Rivers. They have the toughest remaining schedule along with the Suns. Everything, the wheels are coming off on this thing. The only reason I'm picking the box is because somebody has to finish second and everybody behind them is also a hot mess. So yeah, the box, I guess. Perfect, so you all agree. The Bucks are gonna finish second in the East. No doubt about that. John, who's finishing third then? Yeah, uh, again, under protest. <laughs> Uh, initially, I was going to take the Cavs, but they've lost six of ten. Then I was like, you know what? The Magic are young and on the come, and wouldn't that be a good pick? I had to change that, though, because they lost to the Hornets tonight, and I'm not taking anybody that lost to the Hornets. So then I thought, well, what about the Knicks? Uh, I like the way that they responded after they found out that Julius Randle is out for the season. They came back and they beat the Kings, and then they get OG Ananobi back tonight, and they they were going into tonight, 15-2 and two with OG, and I thought, that's the pick. And then they went and lost to the Bulls. So, the Knicks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, Bill, uh, are, are, you, are you more sure of anything at the number three slot here in the East? Only that nothing is right, because John and I are about to agree on consecutive NBA topics for the first time in the history of our working relationship, only because the East is such a mess. This is what it's come to. I, I went the Knicks, too, and right, OG and Adobe returns. It's a significant return, as John noted. They obviously did not win this game, but I think over the remaining games, it, it has an impact. One of the teams they have left is the Milwaukee Bucks, who I think they can beat, but I just took the Bucks as the team that's going to finish a second. It's all None of these options are good options, so I, I'm with John. I will go I'll go with the Knicks, and I do think of that team that are clustered two to six. I think that they are potentially the best basketball team or maybe the most consistent basketball team going forward in the regular season and, and maybe the playoffs, depending on matchups. So, yeah, a, a little more confident, but it re I, the under protest is right. I, it's under protest. You could, you could pull names out of a hat, Russ, and, and you would be just as likely to get this right as if you study it and you analyze it and you feel tormented by it and you give an answer on live TV. Uh, Bill, that was amazing. You tried to talk yourself out of it, and then you went right back to being completely confused look clarity it's at a premium in the east if you want to see something for clear you got to look at the western conference standings because that'll clear everything up for everyone because the west is so i mean oh wait hold on a second we got we got two teams tied with the same record at the top because the t wolves and the thunder both lost on friday they both had a chance to pick up ground the nuggets end up tied for first because they didn't even play on friday T-Wolves, Nuggets, and Thunder. That's the big question. Hey, at least in the West, it's for the number one seed. 
And I'm going to guess that you guys have a little bit higher view of those teams in the West than maybe the other teams in the East. So, John, I'm going to start with you. Who wins the West? Yeah, I'm going to go chalk here. This one, it's not super exciting, but I think it's going to be the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, they lost to the Clippers the other night, but they have the third easiest remaining schedule. Jamal Murray could have played, evidently, against the Clippers in L.A. on Thursday, but they're just being sort of cautious with him. Uh, that was a game they probably could have and should have won. They also have the best player of anybody in that group. Nikola Jokic is about to win his third MVP in four years. I am high on the Timberwolves. Bill knows that about me, uh, but they just lost to the Suns. And then OKC, they're an awesome team. They're young. They're, they're ascendant. Uh, they're one of the two teams in the NBA with a top five offense and defense. But SGA is banged up and Jalen Williams is banged up. So I think coming down the stretch here when you're missing two of your best guys tough for a young team to overcome that so yeah give me the defending champs all right bill you guys have been agreeing on a lot here uh do you agree as well it doesn't feel good russ but i 100 percent <laughs> agree with my friend and colleague john gonzalez no it does feel good and, and he's right look i think the thunder are a fantastic basketball team and whatever doubts i may have about them when we get to the playoffs and they, those very well may be misplaced they are banged up right now they're, they're a great team but their two best players or at least their two top scorers are banged up uh you we know that the, the timberwolves don't have cat right now and the denver nuggets for my money are the best team of that three even when everybody's healthy and as, as john noted jamal murray it seems like he's fine it is a team that has been through the wars before, obviously, the defending champions. And John noted they have one of the easiest strengths of schedules remaining. And they sort of know what this feels like. They know how to handle these moments. So I think this is, as you noted, Russ, an easier pick, a lot easier than the Eastern Conference. It feels like Denver is the team that will come out with that, that number one seed in the Western Conference for all those reasons. Look, down the line in the Western Conference, it's no less muddied. you got four teams that are really in a position where they could get that final playoff spot and avoid the play-in. For all the world, it looks like Golden State's going to lock up at least the 10 seed. Houston's going to go out at some point, although it didn't happen on Friday, even though it could have. The question is, which four teams are going to end up below that six line in the play-in? And, Bill, I'm going to start with you. Which four are in the play-in in the West? I took a bunch of notes, and I wrote it all down. Then I got so frustrated, I just crossed it all out. So, <laughs> for me, this really comes – right, it's between New Orleans, who, who a few weeks ago had the resume of a maybe a dark horse championship team. They've been in sort of a free fall in Phoenix, who I know is extraordinarily flawed and are probably not going to win 16 playoff games if they make the playoffs and be NBA champions. I, I know that. I, I still think probably I, – I am more confident in their occasional ceiling than maybe some other folks – so I'll go with basically chalk. I, I think the Suns are going to be hold on to that position. They, they've been playing better. I think they could be in that six, but it'll be really close because the Pelicans are a really good team. And until recently, they're not now. They were top 10 in offensive and defensive rating. The Lakers obviously have a chance to push the Kings who aren't playing well and sort of steal that opportunity to pull into that eight spot so they can play that seven, eight playing game. And you're right, the Warriors are locked where they are. So I'll go Phoenix as the team that remains out. So Pelicans, Kings, Lakers, maybe not that order. And, and then Warriors, but but it's it, it's a tough call because and John, you and I talk about this all the time. Phoenix is a lot of things this year, but it, inconsistent might be their defining yeah. characteristic, which makes them whatever's going on really hard to pay. All right, last chance, John, to have some sort of disagreement here uh, between <laughs> you. You guys have to go on a podcast together, and something has to come of it. Who are your four teams in the play in the West? You know, Bill is absolutely. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm, we're finally going to disagree on this one. I'm going to work uh, uh, bottom to top. As you mentioned, Golden State, they're going to be locked into that 10. The Lakers do have a shot to leapfrog the Kings because the Kings just took two huge body blows with injuries, losing Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, who's a six-man-of-the-year candidate. So I think Kings, Lakers, and GSW are going to be – uh, in the play-in for sure. So then it leaves the Suns and the Pelicans. Bill thinks the Pelicans are going to fall down. I'm going to say the Suns are going to fall down because they've been hugely inconsistent this season. Yeah, they got a great win tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Good for them. They've won three in a row. I'm still not buying it. They have the toughest remaining schedule along with the Bucks in the NBA. Uh, the, their fourth quarter woes, they are the worst team in the fourth quarter in the NBA. Not by a little, but by a massive margin. And then on top of that, guess who they play on Sunday? the New Orleans Pelicans. So I think the Pelicans have a shot. If the Pelicans lose that, come back and talk to me. I might change my mind. But for right now, I'm not buying that the Suns have all of a sudden gotten everything together and they're going to be all right. Suns, a team that a lot of people th thought won the offseason, had a chance to win the whole thing. Might be the biggest disappointment of the year if they miss the playoffs. Not a disappointment. Bill Ryder, John Gonzalez. Gentlemen, well done under tough circumstances. And we look forward to listening to your podcast on the daily. It's called Beyond the Arc. 
CBS Sports' daily basketball podcast, everything about the NBA and beyond. It's Beyond the Arc. Download and subscribe wherever you podcast.